this week's special edition of MCN. I'm Dave Moore, and we're coming to you from the Macau Grand Prix in Asia. This is the 36th time that bikes have raced around Macau, and what a circuit it is. Unbelievably long, fast straights and sharp, twisty corners. And in the past, the race has been pretty good as well. Nearly half a million people live in the 25 square kilometre region known as Macau. For 450 years it was a Portuguese colony until 1999 when it was handed back to local rule, following in the footsteps of near neighbour Hong Kong. Today Macau is a special administrative region of the People's Republic of China and possesses the highest population rate in the world. Yet, at the same time, its per capita income is one of the highest in Asia. The first motorcycle race was in 1967, and since then, a whole host of famous names have raced around the 3.8 mile long road circuit. Japan's Hiroshi Hasegawa on a Yamaha RD56 won the first race, and Asian riders were to dominate the event for the next 10 years, until Chaz Mortimer won in 1976. A host of top British riders such as Mick Grant, Charlie Williams and Mike Halewood raced at Macau and in 1981 Ron Haslam won the first of his six victories at the circuit. And in 1988 Kevin Schwantz wheelied his way around the track to take the chequered flag to the delight of the crowd who had been kept entertained by the Americans' antics. The 1990s saw the Brits yet again dominate proceedings Robert Dunlop, Carl Fogarty and Steve Hislop all take a victory at the circuit. And in the 94 meeting, Hizzy was looking to become only the third rider to win the Macau GP on three occasions. That year he was racing a Yamaha 500 and his main rivals were Mike Edwards and the Ulsterman Phil McCallan, who was making a name for himself on the roads back home. His lob, though, looked unbeatable, and he romped home with a three-second advantage over Edwards. That was to be his lob's last year at Macau, which left Edwards and McCallan to battle it out in 95, with the Englishman pipping the Ulsterman to win by a tenth of a second. McCallan finally won the following year, but in 97, a new name was to appear on the trophy. Having finished third in 95, Swiss rider Andy Hoffman had vowed to one day win the event. Phil McCallan on the 500 Yamaha was carrying the number one plate at Macau. But it was Hoffman on the 750 Kawasaki who had all the answers that day and he beat the Ulsterman by a comfortable seven seconds. A year later, Michael Rutter won his first Macau Grand Prix with Ian Simpson second and John McGuinness third. 1999 and Andy Hoffman was back, as was Dave Jeffries, who'd made his first appearance in 1993. On that occasion, he'd been out of luck and, due to a mechanical problem, failed to make the grid. This time around, though, he more than made up for it. After a steady start, he slotted in behind McGuinness and Hoffman. And after watching them, especially the Swiss man, bounce their way around the Armco, he slipped past to take his first win at Macau. The race was brought to a premature end when Hoffman's bike spat oil over the track. Jeffries responded, though, by putting down some rubber. Hoffman took second with Michael Rutter finishing third. 
Rutter was back in 2000 on the bike he contested that year's British Superbike Championship. He was looking for his second ever Macau win, as was Dave Jeffries, who was now carrying the number one plate. Rutter led from the start, with Jeffries slotting in in third place. Mark Miller on the Yamaha was the American filling in the Rutter Jeffries sandwich. However, he dropped away and was to finish third, leaving the two Brits to battle it out at the front, with Rutter eventually taking the spoils. That was then, but this is now. And the fastest man in qualifying for the 2002 Macau Grand Prix is Michael Rutter. Michael, what is it about Macau that you love? Um, well, just the atmosphere, really. It's a good, a good event. Uh, there's not too much pressure like uh, British Championship. Uh, just really come out here, enjoy yourself, and, uh, and try and do some fast laps. What a way to enjoy it. I mean, that last qualifying lap was unreal. Yeah, it's really hard around here to get one lap in. It's so long a lap, and you've only got to be slowed down by one or two riders. Uh, through the back section, you can lose seconds. So it's, uh, you've got to time it just right, and uh, you know, we got away with it. We got it just right on the last lap. I have to ask you about the bike, because obviously this is the machine that took you to second in the British Superbike Championship this year. What about setting up for Macau, though? Yeah, like, um, it's the same bike, Ducati Manchester uh, sponsors for this event. So we're basically the same bike, like I rode in England, it's my spare bike. And, yeah, really, we've done very little to it, a few clicks here and there, and uh, we've just gone out on it, really. And it's quite smooth around here, it's in, like, TT or Northwest, where you have to alter it quite a lot. Um, it's, like, basically British Championship settings. So, finally, tomorrow is race day. It's the end of your season, really. How do you expect to see it finish? Um, anything can happen here. Um, it's one of those circuits where you break in last minute uh, from 180 like, mile an hour, and you can easily run on. And if you run here, you can lose, you know, um, a, long, a lot of time, 30 seconds. Uh, so you've got to be careful. And, you know, it's. Um, I think David and John McGuinness, uh, both of them out there, they're going to be after me. Uh, I think it's going to be um, a race between us three, and it's going to be hard. John McGuinness holds the number one plate after winning the 2001 Macau Grand Prix. At this year's event, he finished qualifying two seconds slower than Michael Rutter. Sabu now is the well current king of Macau, John McGuinness. John, uh, second on the grid. Happy? Yeah, really happy, you know. I mean, we've had a few problems on, uh, yesterday in the first practice session. We've been progressively getting the bike better and better all weekend. And, uh, you know, we're a little bit behind Michael, but I'm sure tomorrow we'll be uh, a little bit closer, you know. And, uh, you know, the last couple of days I've enjoyed and you not know, scared myself too much. And, you know, hopefully I'll make a bit of a race of it tomorrow. How have you played qualifying? Because you've been pretty much in the top three all the way through. Yeah, well, we've just been trying to dial a few little problems out. And uh, round here, you need clear track. And, you know, we've been, I was looking for clear track for most of the session and I found it at the end. And then I just really got my head down for two laps, went for it. And uh, when I came over the line on the last lap, I thought, well, if that isn't good enough for the pole, then it isn't good enough, you know, there's, there's uh, nothing else I can do. But, you know, we're on the front row tomorrow, I'm sure it'll be uh, an exciting race. Zongshen, though, is a new name. How did this deal come about? Well, last year when I won the event, we were at the presentation, and one of the, the, the chiefs came to me and um, asked me if I'd uh, like to ride for them next year. And uh, I kept in touch with them the whole of the year. And near the time it came, I just handed it over to Paul. Paul Birdie runs the team for, uh, for us and uh, we just used our machines, Zongsheng colours and uh, we're all happy with how it's going and uh, you know, they're great people, they're enthusiastic and uh, I'd like to uh, keep the relationship going for the future. And third, Quig. This man needs no introduction, of course. He's kicked some backsides this year on the roads, but he's not having it all his own way here in Macau. Dave Jeffries, third in qualifying. Good result for that. Uh, it's the best we can do at the minute, yeah. We had a problem yesterday, unfortunately. I did about 100 yards out of the pit lane and the bike blew up. So, sat all of this yesterday's session out. I mean, that's I've had problems here for the last three years on the first day, so I'm always playing catch-up. But the uh, team have worked well. The guys worked, uh, worked well yesterday to put the new engine in. Could do with a little bit of setting up, but you know, a little bit short of time. But now it seems to be going. I'm quite happy with third place. Was it a race against time today, or were you not too bothered? A little bit. I mean, the problem is here, it's so hot that we're just not used to it with that. Marcus Barth is a regular campaigner at Macau. He's on a 750 Kawasaki and completes the front row. Yes, I'm very happy today. I'm very surprised. I have an old Kawasaki here, and 
Yeah, I have to say, we are, the team make a good job and we are really all together very surprised for this result. Another seasoned campaigner is Ian Duffus. He's riding VNM's Yamaha at Macau. Teammate Jim Moody struggled during qualifying, but Duffus is on row two and ready to ride his own race. It's a dodgy old place, you know, I've been coming here a few years now, so you, you sort of learn to respect it and ride it for what it is, so uh, just get the race over and done with tomorrow. I mean, look forward to it, but at the same time, you know, I've got my pace and that's the pace I'll be riding at. Now beside me is a face we all recognise here on MCN, it's Jason Griffiths. Jason, tell me about your qualifying. Yeah, pretty good, Dave. Um, riding the Chrysalis Suzuki that Kieran Murphy rode in the British Championships this year. It's a super stock bike, so it's uh, it's difficult to be up against some of the higher spec machinery, but I'm pleased to, looks like we've qualified 10th, so I'm happy with that. So what about this Macau circuit, what's it like? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Obviously there's Armco barriers everywhere, so it's really dangerous and you've got to just try and be smooth. But uh, in this heat, it's, it's pretty physical, so it's, it's very difficult. So how smooth were you? Yeah, I did touch the Amco in, uh, in the first qualifying session, just brushed it down at Lisboa, so I uh, need to try and avoid doing that anyway. And finally, the target for tomorrow? Well, to get a good safe finish, I mean, the first lap is always pretty hectic, so if I can get through that and then set a steady pace for 15 laps, hopefully we'll, we'll be thereabouts anyway. Jason heads Rowie, but this is the front row, Rutter, McGuinness, Jeffries and Bath, with Brian Morrison on the front of row two, alongside him is Gus Scott. So that's how they line up on the grid. Will Rutter's dominance of qualifying though carry through to the race? Or do Jeffries and McGuinness have something extra up their sleeves? Only one way to find out. Join us again after the break when we go racing. Welcome back to this special edition of MCN and we're just moments away from the start of the Macau Grand Prix and what a front row we've got. Dave Jeffries, John McGuinness and this man in pole, Michael Rutter. Who's he going to be? Let's find out. We're just seconds away from the start of this motorbike Macau Grand Prix. Rutter's in pole, McGuinness alongside him is Jeffries. Who's going to get the best start? Rutter, if he gets the best, could be unbeatable. In fact, it is Rutter who has the edge, but Jeffries is going backwards. Jeffries is about ninth or tenth there. Jason Griffiths is up from row three. He's into sixth, and that's Ronnie Smith. Ronnie Smith is stalled on the start. It looks as if it could be good night from him with the race only seconds old. Rutter leads McGuinness, leads Scott into Lisboa. Jeffries has got his work cut out, he's gone backwards as they're all just squeezing through, avoiding the armco on the left there at uh, the Lisboa corner. They stream their way around on this opening lap of this 3.8 mile circuit. It's Rutter who's got all the answers at the moment. Jeffries is trying to find his way past Jason Griffiths. He's back in ninth at the moment. Marcus Barth, the German, front row start. He's currently in fifth position as we look back from McGuinness's bike. And he's starting to put some distance between himself and Gus Scott, who's on John Reynolds' British superbike machine. He's in third. The view from the front, and there's a lot of open space there. Well, crammed in between the armco for Michael Rutter. Twice he's won here before, so he certainly knows this place like the back of his hand as he rounds the hairpin and makes his way out round the back of the circuit towards the start and finish. Macau's got some long, long straights, and whether the Ducati can handle that remains to be seen, but it's certainly singing sweetly at the moment as Michael Rutter leads John McGuinness around the right-hander over the start and finish line. Still no sign of Dave Jeffries. What a dreadful start from the big Yorkshireman. Rutter, though, and McGuinness, they're holding all the aces at the moment, but the question is whether McGuinness has got anything in reserve to answer any of the questions that Rutter is posing. Michael Rutter squirming his way round the big hairpin at Macau. McGuinness tries he can, can't seem to reel him in. Well, no one could touch this guy in practice, and it seems to be the same in the race. Two seconds quicker he was than McGuinness in qualifying. He's just a shade quicker than McGuinness around the circuit during race day. And it looks as if there's no beating Michael Rutter. The only question is, will he beat himself? Well, it's an early bath for Marcus Bath, the German having to call it a day. He's got some sort of mechanical problem. 
One man without a problem, though, is Dave Jeffries. He's now up into third place and on the coattails, or trying to get on the coattails, of John McGuinness. What a fantastic ride from Jeffries. Tenth on the opening lap. He's now made his way up into third. And there he is now, storming in. Gus Scott still behind him. So the race is on for second. Jason Griffiths round Liz Boa. That's Kallenberger he's following. And that's the fight for eighth place. Michael Rudd is still leading. Checkered flags not far away. A lap or so still to go. That indeed is the last lap board, so 3.8 miles left for Michael Rutter, and victory will be his. The question is now, though, who will be second? McGuinness is still there, big, big power in that big, big bike. Rutter now taking it easy. He certainly, his times have indicated he's easing off. Little wheelies here and there. Round the hairpin for the final time. Will he look back to see if McGuinness... So it's Rutter's race, he's got a six-second advantage over McGuinness. Jeffries, nine seconds behind Rutter, finishes in third. Rutter becomes the fourth rider to win at least three Macau Grand Prix. Now, though, it's the burnout competition. Dave Jeffries, third place. It all went wrong in the first lap, really. No, if, uh, it, was, it was actually went to plan, actually. We, um, this year, we've had a few problems with the clutch burning out, so I just... Yeah, I tried 100% the whole way, you know. Made a good start, tried to hang on to Michael, but couldn't just so set into a rhythm on my own. And uh, I enjoyed the ton laps, you know, it's the best I could do. And, you know, the Zhongjing bike kept going, no problem, and uh, mega enjoyed it. The Come out next year for another go. The important thing is you beat Dave. I say you've got to beat the big guy. <laughs> a more sedate entrance for the Macau Grand Prix winner for 2002, Michael Rutter. They may not win Miss World, but these are the three of the hottest guys on motorbikes, on the roads, anywhere in the world today. Michael Rutter, congratulations. You made it look easy, but I'm sure you're going to tell me it wasn't. No, definitely not. You know, uh, with John and uh, David behind me, it was, you know, I had to keep uh, my mind on it and uh, keep pushing. Uh, I just got it up to about five or six seconds gap and really just tried to hold it there. And you know, everything went well, the bike went well. It's Ducati's ever first win here, so, you know, um, we're happy. Your third win here, how does this one compare with the other two? Um, the other two were a lot harder, you know, with the Ducati this year. Um, I've been riding it all year and just jump on it and it's it's made a lot easier for me so um, yeah no real problem in the race or anything so it's good and a pretty good way to end what's been a fairly successful year yeah like last three races we've, well last four races we've run we've won them so uh, British Championship and coming to Macau so yeah you know it's uh, ended up as a good year beside me is Jason Griffiths who you all know he's been testing our bikes for us here on MCN the last few weeks and he's put the Macau Grand Prix circuit to the test today what's it like yeah it's pretty interesting Dave uh, really glad to have finished third visit First time I've finished, so it's been fantastic. What's it like? What are the West Bits? What are the worst bits? It's all good fun. It's uh, it's pretty different. The the bottom section is very fast, and then obviously you've got the very tight and twisty sections at the back of the track. So it's got a little bit of everything in it. Okay, we're almost finished here at the Macau Grand Prix. But first of all, before we go, we're going to check out some of the latest sports and industry news. This computer-generated image is Aprilia's new 2004 RSV Millet bike and is based on photographs which have been leaked during testing in Croatia. The bike's chassis and styling look completely new. The bike's nose also reveals an SP2-style ramp air, while gone is the trademark triple headlight in favour of a double. The bike is expected to make its public debut next September. And congratulations to World Supersport rider Jamie Whittam and his wife Andrea on the birth of their first child. Ruby weighed in at just under seven pounds. Sadly, that's it. We've now got to pack up and go back home to Europe. And also, we've got to say farewell from us here at MCN for this week. But tune in again next week for Miss Brady's your host, and she's at Percy in Paris. Up next, all the essential action from the first two rounds of the National Tarmacadam and British Historic Championships in Rally UK.